Hello everyone, this is Allison Livingstone from Simplifying Souls. In today's video, I want to share with you five organizational email tips for agents. These would really work for any industry, but I found them especially helpful for realtors. So let's get started. Okay, so the first couple tips I'm going to show you in Gmail, but most other email platforms should have similar features or services. Okay, so tip number one is going to be using filters in your email. So the biggest benefit to this is you're able to get things out of your inbox or immediately route them to a specific label or immediately forward them based on if they're unimportant, important, or what kind of stuff they may contain. So my biggest thing I like to use this for is mass marketing emails, which I know a lot of realtors get from other properties or people trying to sell you products that will help your business. So by putting all these away in a folder, you can always check them out later. We don't have to worry about unsubscribing from them all, but they'll keep our email more organized and hopefully to mostly just business tasks. So I'll go in here and show you how to create a filter and tell you some other things you can filter for. Okay, so here's how to create a filter in Gmail. So log into your Gmail account, and then we're gonna go up to settings in the top right corner, and then see all settings. Next, we're gonna go to filters and blocked addresses. So I already have one filter in here. I'm gonna delete that one and make a new one. Okay, so then we're gonna to want to create a new filter. So what you see in this pop-up is all the different options that you can use as criteria to help filter your emails. So if you know there's a certain email address, like your broker, that's always gonna be really important. You can say anything from that email address is going to do X, Y, Z, or anything that has an attachment. This is something I think is a great tip for realtors. Most of our important documents, you know, executive amendments, final contracts, CDs, things that have a kind of intense deadline usually are attached to emails. So what you could do is has attachment, create filter, and you could star it or always mark it as important. You could have it go to a certain label that you create, maybe such as attachments or something like that. Probably what I would recommend is always marking it as important and starring it. That way when you come to check your email first thing in the morning or at the end of the day, those things are gonna be popping up right at the top and clearly marked as important. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that filter. Great, and then I wanna create one more about the unsubscribe I discussed. Okay, so let's create one more filter. So what we're gonna do here is try to target mass marketing emails that may be popping up in your inbox, taking over those important emails just by sheer volume. So a trick for this is to type in, has the words unsubscribe. Most big marketing emails going to hundreds or thousands of people are going to contain these words. Occasionally I see one or two slip through the cracks, maybe from a smaller company or someone who's sending out their own marketing one by one, but this takes care of a big chunk of those emails for you. So a quick tip here, a little warning. Um, my personal MLS system, a lot of the ones I work with, they do use the word unsubscribe in their emails. So a way to get around this is has the words unsubscribe, but doesn't have whatever your MLS name is, their email address, whatever they send consistently in every single one of their emails, then it's gonna filter out everything that has the word unsubscribe except for the ones that have your MLS information. Okay, so in general, we're going to do has the words unsubscribe, create filter. And you have lots of different options here. You can skip the inbox and archive it if it's none of it's important to you, but you basically just don't wanna take the time to go through and unsubscribe. You could skip the inbox or delete it. You could apply a label such as marketing materials or promotional materials and everything will filter over to this side. And then 
You can also never mark it as important or categorize it as maybe social or promotions that can work really well too. You'll see those on the side over there as well. So let's say for us, we want it to just be archived. Create filter. So now we have filters for anything that comes through with an attachment is going to be starred and marked as important. And anything that has unsubscribed in it, which is typically those mass marking emails, is going to skip our inbox and go straight to archives. So we can always search for that later or look it up if we're curious, but that can save a lot of mess and help keep your emails nice and organized. Okay, tip number two goes specifically to Gmail and Google Drive. And this tip is to utilize Drive for any attachments going in or out of your emails. So luckily, Gmail and Google Drive makes these super simple by usually having an extension in the email on any attachments you may see or to add attachments from your drive. I personally create a drive folder for all of my agents I work with, and then within that, each property we are working on. So it makes it super simple to attach things and to upload things to the correct place as soon as I get the email so it doesn't get lost later. So now I'm going to show you a quick example of how to pull something into Google Drive and how to put an attachment there that you receive from title or the lender or something you want to make sure it doesn't get lost. Okay, here is how to easily utilize Drive to save and send attachments from Gmail. So I'm going to click on this email I just received with my example attachment. Now let's say this is for my Sally Smith seller at 123 Main Street. I am going to highlight over the PDF and click this Add to Drive button. Then it's going to give me the option to organize and I'm going to go to Sally's folder and then to her 123 Main Street folder. And if I press move here, it is automatically going to put that in that folder. So if I went over to my drive, here it is. So if you do use Drive to create folders for clients or properties, this is a great way to streamline saving those attachments outside of downloading them, etc. Um, and for compliance purposes, if your brokerage uses DocuSign or things like that, some of them let you upload documents straight from Drive, which helps streamline it more. Okay, now let's say this was an executed amendment from the listing agent, and I'm gonna send it to the title company. We're gonna compose a new email, and then I'm going to click this Drive button down here. If you see, if you highlight your cursor over it, it says Insert Files Using Drive. My Drive, I'm gonna to go to Sally's folder, 123 Main Street, and select the appropriate document. And you'll see two options down here, Insert as Drive Link or Attachment. Personally, I use Attachment since I like to keep my drives private except for myself or the clients. And then I'm gonna press Insert. Now it's perfectly attached. I know it's the right one because it's directly from Drive where I had it saved and you can fill out the rest of your email and send. Okay, my third tip is going to be using templates in your emails. So if you're an agent, you likely send very similar emails to all of your clients before the transaction, once under contract, leading up to the inspection, before the closing. So a huge time saver is to have these drafted email templates saved. Then you can go in each time, just make the proper adjustments to the client name, the date, etc., and could save you upwards of 10 to 15 minutes every time you go to send an email. So this is a big time-saving tip, and I will show you how to create an email template in Gmail here. To create a template in Gmail, we're first going to go to our settings in the top right corner. See all settings and advanced. And what we want to do here is make sure the section that says templates is enabled. Once we have that corrected, we are going to go back and press compose new email. So what you're doing here is typing in any content that you want to save as a future template. So for example, we could do a great email to buyers that we send every time before their inspection.
and you could type all your bullet points, whatever you want here. So whatever you type in the subject is going to pop up every time. So if you want to make that something specific, something more client friendly, you can do that and we can always save the template under a different name later. You don't want to put any recipients in this block here when we're just creating the template for the first time. You'll notice I don't have my signature on here. I don't have a signature in this account anyway, but whenever I create templates for the first time, I delete the signature. Otherwise, when you compose a new email and apply the template, it will have the two signatures on there, and if you forget to delete one, it's just not as clean of a look and not what I like. Okay, so once you've typed out your email and you're happy with it to use it moving forward, we're gonna click on these three dots and press more options. Then we're going to go to Templates, Save Draft as Template, and Save as New Template. So we could save this as our buyer inspection email or whatever we want to call it. If you do change the title here, it does not change the original subject you typed in, FYI. Once we're happy with the template name, press Save. Okay, so now we can delete this and we'll go to Compose a New Email. So I'm ready to send my buyer inspection email to my actual client. I'm going to click more options, the three little dots down here, templates, and then insert whichever template I want to apply. You can have as many templates saved here as you'd like. Click on it and it will pull up the exact email and it should populate your signature as well. You can make any adjustments to dates or names or anything you would like here. Then type in your recipient and send as normal. At any time, if you decide you want to change a template, maybe some of the content, then you can make these applicable changes and overwrite the template. So to do that, we're going to press more options again, the three little dots, then go to templates, save draft as template, and click on the appropriate template that we want to make the corrections to. So for example, this is the buyer inspection email. It's going to ask if we really want to overwrite the template. If you do, you're going to press save, and then those changes will be reflected anytime you use the template moving forward. Okay, tip number four is for people who use Evernote. Um, Evernote is very similar to Google Drive, so you can have both or you can probably deal with just one or the other. And my favorite thing about Evernote when it comes to emails is that similar to Google Drive, you can create folders for each client, for each agent, for each property, or even more specific than that, they call them notebooks and notebook stacks in Evernote. And what Evernote does is they will give you a specific Evernote email address and you can send things from your email by forwarding them directly into Evernote. Now this does require an extra step. You'll need to then go into the main section of your Evernote notes and properly allocate it to the proper folder. But if you're using this folder system instead of Drive, it's definitely a time-saving tip. And what I like about this for organizational purposes is it saves the entire email. So, you know, if you have a client who asked a question or you need it on record that you sent something at a certain time or that you disclosed something, saving the entire email and attachments in Evernote can be a great way to make sure you have a backup of those records. To send emails directly to Evernote, the first thing you're going to need to do is get your specific Evernote email address. So we're going to open the Evernote app and then go to our profile in the top left hand corner and account info. Then we're going to click on more account settings which will open your internet browser. Once you see this account summary page, scroll all the way to the bottom. You'll see the email address you signed up with and then you'll see your specific email address to send notes to. So we're going to copy this address. I recommend saving this as a Google contact with just the first name Evernote or Evernote files. So you can type that in really quickly every time you're trying to forward the document. Okay, once we have that copied, we're going to X out and we're going to go into our email and see whichever one we want to forward to Evernote. So here I have an example email I received with an attachment I'm going to forward this to my Evernote file. So copied that in there. Like I said, if you save it as a contact, that'll be really efficient moving forward. Okay, then press send. 
So what we're going to do then is we're going to go back into the Evernote application. Since this was sent directly into Evernote, it's going to go into our generic My Notebook or First Notebook, whatever it's called for you. You can also change where you want it to go. Sometimes if it doesn't pop up, you can press this refresh button and there you go. Now let's say that this note is for my seller, Sally Smith. So I'm going to go up to these three dots and press move note to, and I'm going to select Sally Smith's notebook and press move. Now it's out of my generic notes section, and if I go to Sally's file, her email's right there. So once again, this is extra helpful. Not only does it save the attachment really easy for you to find later, but if Sally had typed anything or I had sent anything to the other agent or title company, it would all be reflected right here. So I would have records of every single conversation had with anyone, which can provide very helpful information in the future. Okay, so the last tip, number five, is limiting how many times a day you check your email. Now, you've probably heard this tip from time management gurus and success coaches, but as we all know, it's much easier said than done and something I'm guilty of not doing myself as well. So the biggest thing that makes this critical for organizational purposes is that by time blocking and sitting down maybe an hour or twice a day to check and organize your emails, it's gonna help prevent things from slipping through the cracks, especially attachments or things that may need a response from you. For example, if you decide to check your email quickly while you're waiting in line for your coffee, you may see something important and note mentally to go back to it later, but in the crazy world of real estate, that could be easily forgotten. You could accidentally swipe and delete it or archive it, or if you leave it opened, when you go back and check your unopened emails later, you may accidentally think it was already addressed and seriously delay responding to someone or saving an attachment. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video with some real life tips on how you can organize your email, applicable especially to real estate agents, but really to any industry and anyone looking to streamline and organize their emails. I would love to hear a comment below about extra organizational tips you use in emails, and I will link my blog as well. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.